Hello everyone, it looks like we're live. I think audio is working, but I'll wait to make sure. Um, where did I put the giveaway? I have the painting right here. Where did I put it? Okay, we have the giveaway painting too. Okay, audio video is good. So tonight we have a giveaway. We are actually, let's pull this over here. So this is the painting that is going to be given away. This was donated by Rob Youngs who actually bought it and then wanted to donate it for the live stream. So yay, Rob, thank you so much. So if you want to enter for this, the link is in the video description. If you were, the entry for this one is only within the US, but if you do enter, I should have grabbed them. Why didn't I grab them? I have a bunch of mini prints or like greeting cards. I'm not sure which one I'm giving away, but if you can enter, but if you're outside of the US, that's what you're entering for, not this, because I can't ship this, because it's shipping outside of the US is a pain. Um, so anyway, that the link is in the video description and we'll be announcing the winner later tonight when I finish the artwork itself. So again, you can enter for this within the US, but the we'll be choosing at least five people that, and that is open to anywhere in the world of the, and the rules are um, on the link if you click there, that is available to anybody. So if you get chosen, you're actually gonna get a mini print, not of this, just a mini print of one of my paintings or drawings. And then um, the big giveaway will be tonight for that. So we'll be announcing that later. Make sure to head over to the link in the, the description. We are having this giveaway over on MeWe because I sure as heck do not trust Facebook because they have a history of randomly deciding, meh, we think that, that we're gonna ban you for no apparent reason, even though you don't ever comment on anything or say anything mean or anything. I had that happen a few years ago, and so I just do not trust them with important things business-wise. So that's why we were having it over on MeWe, because that would really suck to have to lose my account, even if temporarily, because with me it was like two days and it was still, like if I was having a giveaway at the time, I would have been screwed. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. So tonight we are going to be working in pan pastels and colored pencil. I must have bumped my thing just a bit there. There we go. Come on, don't, don't lag on me here. Um, I don't know what is with that camera. But anyway, we are going to be working in pan pastels and base layer here for our the glitch that stole Christmas. This is my red eye tree frog glitch. And this is actually, if you have the reference photo, you can get that, or if you don't have it, you can go get it. The link is in the video description. It's free to everybody. It's actually just me, a Photoshop mock-up of three different images. The actual photo, you see some little things on her mouth. That's her dinner that was still stuck on her face because she has to be force fed. She has a neurological disorder. That's why she's so special. She should have passed on three years ago when that happened, but I've been force feeding her a couple times a week and she's like lives a perfectly normal froggy life except she can't catch food. So she wants to, she just can't. So that's what, why, um, what this photo was from one of her feedings. She's so cute. Anyway, let's move on. So I pre-drew everything out on tracing paper and I used transfer paper to transfer it onto the paper so that I have clean lines, no eraser marks or anything like that. And this drawing, if you're within the US, you can bid on that if you want to own your own glitch, Chris, glitch that stole Christmas drawing. And let's see, the auction has started. And let's go. So I'm going to be starting, okay, I was trying to turn off some of these, noti okay, no, that's not the notification. I'm trying, I, I try, I'm messing with the notifications <coughs> for Discord for during the live stream, so I only get the notifications from the mods and I don't know if I screwed it up or not, so I don't even know if I turned that off instead on accident. We'll see, I guess I'll find out. If I don't answer you, Nick, just text me. Okay, so let's go ahead, oh, I don't have my reference fo photo pulled up, there we go. Let's start, I'm gonna start with a green on glitch. So I'm going to be using soft tools and all the links for what I'm using are in the video description. The soft tools, this is kind of like a, a palette knife with a little spongy guy on top of it and that's what I'm going to be using there. I'm going to be grabbing just this middle green. This one is permanent green. And the way that I'm going to get that, we're just going to load a bit of that onto my soft tool and then come over here and block this out. Okay, I need to turn off the notifications for MeWe apparently. I think that's what keeps coming in. So we're going to fill that in. And if I get it on her arm or where I don't want it, I can either erase it, which, where is my eraser? I always have one sitting here, which means it probably is on the floor somewhere because I keep knocking stuff off behind the easel. Okay, hold on, I am actually gonna need a eraser for soft pastels, or not soft pastels, pan pastels, I really like the um, kneaded erasers. Yep, here's one. Oh, look at you two, they're being extra adorable. 
how cute. Oh, you can't really tell, but their heads are basically resting on each other. You can't, it doesn't really look like it at this angle. That's really cute. Oh, and that works out perfect from Sylvia said, let's not forget the pup. So we've got a super chat for the boys. Yes, you've got your super chat. You can come get it. Come on, Wade. What the boys? Say thank you so much, Sylvia. You guys get a super chat. There you go. Good boys. Oh, you can't even see them getting there. I hit the wrong camera. Anyway, there's their, say thank you. You got to hear them crunch at least, I guess. Okay, that's it. Go lay down now. Lay down. Gibson, stop licking the floor. Go lay down. This is why I have tile. Yep, and we've got a bed swap. Lay down. Gibson's like, wait, that was the one I was in. Yep, and we've got Dragon in the background climbing all over the place. He's being super active back there again tonight. His video will be next of building, because um, I basically sculpted, it was a way of sculpting the rock work in his tank. So that will be the next video I'm working on. Okay, back to work. So on this, I kind of went outside the line over the where I want, or actually, no, that it needs to be green. Never mind, I don't need to erase it. That was pointless. All that, getting up and looking for soft tools for nothing. Okay, let's fill this in here. I'm working on cans and tens. This is the smooth side. I'll be going over this in colored pencil, so nothing needs to be perfect, but I'd rather not be, you know, on the outside where I don't want color, since I am leaving part of that background clean. Got her little wrist over here. And I think that's pretty good. So let's get some shading with the green. I'm going to use a little bit of, I think this is red oxide or red iron oxide. I'm gonna mix some of that with my green and that's gonna give me a nice dark, kind of a muddy color, but dark. I don't wanna jump just straight to black for any shadows. Go with that. That's not to say I won't use black, it's just not going to be the first color I jump to there. Smudge those together. Now I'm going to dab. All I'm gonna do, because I want to use that same brush, just wiping some of it off on my paper towel, and now I can smudge these colors together. Just soften that out a bit. Before we get too far, Kirsten said, uh, before you get, uh, I should read that right. Kirsten said, before you get too far, good doggos, we've got another super chat. Oh, they, they believe me this time. You guys want a super chat from Kirsten? Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you boys. Go, go boys. That was a very nice job, Wade. You didn't even munch my fingers at all. Very impressive. Good boy. Okay, go lay down, lay down. Gibson, lay down. Staring at the floor won't make more. Gibson, lay down. Wade, stop sniffing the plants. <laughs> lay down. Wade, lay down. Cow, such a bad cow. Thank you so much. The boys thank you too. <coughs> Python said, I think Wade is becoming a good cow bit by bit. Eh, he has moments. I don't think we'll ever have a fully good cow. We've got a test from, let's see what test that came from. Joseph, wait, where did that test come from? Yes, it did come. Okay, I'm, so I am getting notifications from the mod, so that is working. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more green. This one is more of an olive green. I'm getting just some variation of, of the greens in there so she's not just flat one color. And then most of the other shading really I'm gonna do with the pencil, so that's fine for the base. I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to switch to the orange. I'm not doing red just yet, only because this mixed with orange actually works because her it's going to muddy it up a little bit because I still have green on it. And that way when I move to the red, the sponge will kind of be clean. The green will have been worn off enough, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing, let's, let's word this in a way that other people can understand besides the person in my head. I wiped the green off the sponge, but there's still a little bit of green on there. And I don't really want to waste the sponge. It, it's not enough green that I need to, to change it all the way, but I don't want it to mute the red in her eyes. So 
I'm gonna use orange first. I'm gonna do the orange of her toes. By, that, by the time I hit the red with the same sponge, I don't even have to change. By the time I hit the red, the green's pretty much all mixed in from off the, the sponge completely from between wiping it off and then mixing with the orange. It's not even enough on there to have made that whole story. That is pretty clean. See like here, it's starting to get a little dirtier as some of the orange wears off. That toe is a little bit darker because some of the green poking through, not a lot. And we've got the base over here. And it's always easier to go lighter than what you think you want that end result to be than the reverse. Go a little, yeah, see some of the green is coming out in that one. It, it's minor. I don't know how well that even shows on camera. So you might not even notice it. And it, it's okay if this gets the, the orange gets in the red of the bulb because that's close enough. You're not even gonna notice it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off. We're gonna do the red now. Actually, let's get a base for the gold. I'm gonna use, this is, is this burnt sienna? Yep, burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna get this kind of dark one color. Same thing, same brush. I don't even have to change my sponge. And that works and all the shading will be done with my pencils on that. Now I'm going to wipe that again. And let's go ahead and do the red. This is a really bright red. There is a little bit that is sticking in the background. I don't want that to smudge. Let me see, I should have a drafting brush down here. So there it is. Let's get that off before it smudges at all. And let's go ahead and fill this in. And if you have any questions, I'll be answering those at the end of the live stream. So go ahead and leave those now. And I don't care if this is completely solid, like if it's a little blotchy, that's okay. This is looking a little bit orange on camera. It's definitely red in person. So make yours, if you're following along, make that more red. Let me see if I can adjust the colors. All the rest of the colors are perfect, except red. I might be able to fix that. Let's see. Um, camera hub. That is the second camera. Let me see. Oh, too much. Eh. Just know that it's red. I mean, I think that's probably as close as I'm gonna get. The paper is actually more of a warmer gray. It's not a, it, like now it looks almost like a cool bluish gray, but it's really a warm gray. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get the ornament. Now, if you don't have the pan pastels, don't worry about it. You can do this, follow along just with your colored pencils. It's just gonna take you a bit longer, but you don't have to use the pan pastels. This is just making things go way faster. Let's clean up that edge just a little bit. Actually, I'll probably end up cleaning that up more with a colored pencil would be easier than to fuss with this. And if it feels awkward for you at first with the soft tools, that's normal. The more you use them, the more comfortable you'll get with them. Don't feel like you used them once, had a hard time controlling them, and then, oh my gosh, I'm terrible at this. That's not really the case. I may be able to adjust the color saturation. Maybe that'll help with the weird orange that you're seeing on this bulb. Mine is like red, red, like stop sign red. I see that from you, Oriel Beagle. Give me one second. I'm gonna get this layered in so that I can spray it with the fixative and then uh, we will be, I can't say it out loud or the boys will know. 
Actually, wait, I still need white anyway. We can take a quick break after I fill this. I have to pretend I'm not excited or the boys will jump up. Thank you so much, Oreo Beagle. Do you boys want a super chat? Wade's like, no, I don't think you're giving one this soon. Come on, Wade, you can get a super chat too. You didn't believe me that time. He's like, why am I getting so many in a row? There you go, good boys. Oh, look how nice you took that, good cow. Oh, Gibson, you're slobbering on me. Stop, don't lick my leg. If you got crumbs on me, that's your own fault. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good boys, thank you so much. Cow, go, you can, he's just standing here staring at me. Cow, go lay down. Cow, lay down. Both of you, down. Cow, lay down. Good boys, kind of. I mean, for race dogs, you're really slow. Uh, you, you know, gotta say that. Okay. We've got to get her a little eye. I'm not going to worry about the black. I'll do that with a colored pencil. I'll just make a hot mess if I try to do that right now. Okay, let's get some shading in there. So with that, we do have some black. I'm going to mix black with some magenta and purple. So I'm just mixing that straight in on my pan pastels. And I know that drives people crazy because my pan pastels end up being a mess, but the, it doesn't really affect the artwork negatively. So I'm okay with it. Get a little bit of a shadow under the toe, a little bit under here. I'm going to wipe some of this off and reload with red and just blend that transition. And I reloaded with the red so that I'm not just like knocking and wiping the, the pigment off. So that gives me a really nice soft transition between those two colors. Oh, I'm already really happy with how this is coming out. Okay. Let's get some more of the same thing, the black and the magenta. And I'm going to get a shadow right under here. And I'm going to wipe that off on my paper towel and grab more red. So you can see I've got that loaded again with the red and now I'm going to go right in between here so I get this nice blend between that shadow and the brighter part of the ornament. Okay, I'm going to wipe this. Actually, wait, we've still got to get a little bit of sh shading. I don't know how much of the shading I'll do with this and how much with the pencil. A little bit on the eye there. Get a little bit on her face. We've got some of my burnt sienna. I'm just kind of muddy at this point, mixed with what's already on the soft tool. Get some shadows blocked in there. I'm going to add a bit of white with the raw sienna and mix that for under her chin. So even though technically this is the white part, it's really in shadow. So white is never, not normally really white. That actually works pretty good. Let's get a little bit of blue. And I'm just, again, wiping that off on my paper towel in between color changes there. A little bit of blue there. Just get a little bit of blue in her arm. A little bit in here. Okay, now going to the white, the white will, I'm going to go ahead and switch Pam Pastel tools because that is going to make a hot mess. Actually, we'll use the bigger one since I'm going to be doing a bigger section. And let's just get the hint of snow. I'm 
And I've got to be careful. I don't want to go too close to the ball there because I will pull all that color out into the snow, which I don't want just yet. Now this will fit, it's a five by seven. And so not all of this is going to show when it's matted. This is the amount that actually will be more like that. That's about how much will show. Just let, I want that background to show and we're not going super solid. And now I'm going to take some of the black with the magenta. Let's get a little red in there too. And we're just gonna create a little bit of that reflection right under the ornament. Not too crazy. It doesn't actually show up very well for you. Let me see if I can fix that camera right now. Hold on one second. I'm wondering if I adjust the saturation. Is that what you're having? It? Yeah, oh, that made a big difference. So bringing the saturation down a little bit. Um, let's see. That didn't really do much. One second. My husband knows I'm live streaming, but wants to know if I bought things for him. Like, <laughs> hold on, actually, let's be a jerk and make sure. Live streaming. I don't know why he can't buy it himself. Okay. Um, that should work. That's about as good as that's going to get. Now, let me show you though, the color difference, cause it's like really different. Like it is red, red, uh, even that looks a little orangey, but it is like red. So there we go. Okay. And we want a little bit of, we need the white on our hat. I want to be careful not to smudge this into the red a whole bunch, but I'm putting that on there pretty thick too. We'll put some little, little bit of white for the highlight there on her. And then we've also got some highlight on the uh, ornament, which I held off on just to the end because I knew as soon as I did this, I'm going to pick up a ton of red on my brush and I don't want to, um, I wouldn't be able to use it again for white. Don't over blend. That's a big one too. If you overdo this, you just end up with one kind of solid medium color. You don't have your definite light and dark. at the top let me go a little bit brighter and then I'll correct the, uh, the shape of the ornament in a moment here okay I like it so is there anything else I don't think the rest I'm going to do with colored pencils okay so let me spray this and I'm going to be using spectra fix this is what it looks like what it comes in and I put it in a fine mist sprayer this sprayer I've been using for years people have asked me if it clogs it never has but it looks like it is hitting the point where I might need to replace it. The inside is kind of collapsing into itself, but I've used this for a couple of years now, so I can't really complain. Let me go ahead and mist that. And it's better if you do a light, like a couple of light layers than a heavy layer. Let me dry this. Now, if I don't dry this, it will dry on its own, but it will warp the paper a little bit because this paper is very absorbent. So um, like if you did that over a hot press watercolor paper, a light mist, you're probably, it's not gonna be an issue. But on this, the, with the Canson B10s, it definitely will start to warp. So if you really want it to dry back into place, just I've got everything taped down and then the heat from the hairdryer will pull it all back into place. 
So now let me go ahead and put this away and I'm gonna pull my colored pencils out. So I've gotta do a swap here. I'd play my Patreon ad, but I need to make a new one because the prices are, everything's different now. So one of these days I'm going to make a new funny ad, or at least that's the plan. Hi, dragon. You didn't get any treats, did you? Oof. Okay, let's get those down there. I don't think I need anything from this card. I think I just need to swap out. I'm gonna turn this camera off so I can grab my pencils and I don't think we need that camera. Um, let's see, easel. Nope, we do want that one. Palette, that's the one. Let's turn that off. That should hopefully, I'm hoping anyway, make it so I get a little bit less laggy on the main camera. Let's just brought, bring out, I have these, these are my pastel drawers. They're just three drawer pastel drawers. Um, they're wonderful for storing your colored pencils. Unless you travel, if you travel with your colored pencils, then those folder types are better. Okay. There we go. So I've got a mixture of Karen Dosh Luminance, Derwent Drawing, and uh, Derwent Lightfast, and Polychromos. Oh, and we have from Hitomi, says, treats for the doggies or dragon. You guys want a treat? I can't give dragon a treat right now because his treats move and I have to go get, catch them. Uh, they're like, we, we heard there'd be treats. I gave him some dandelion leaves earlier. I don't know if he ate them. It's all gone. Tomorrow's uh, bug day for dragons, so he get he'll get all the treats tomorrow. That's his favorite. All gone. Go lay down. You're good. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Yeah, I can't even do super uh, chats. Lay down for dragon because the only thing that he would like every time eat that he loves loves would be bugs but I don't want to overfeed him because that actually can affect his health in a very negative way so yeah I can't really push my luck with him on that but thank you so much oh and we have another one boys are gonna be happy about this from I'm glad I made him lay down first it's better practice from JL she said treats for me too oh you heard the word you want a super chat this is a fun game huh are you guys having so much fun? They series, they love live stream night. When I put, as soon as those beds are in here, they're both in their beds waiting, like two hours early, waiting for it to start. Good boy, look how nice you're doing, Wade. This is the best you've done in a long time. Why are you being so gentle? It's weird. I like it though. Okay, go lay down. Say thank you. Go lay down. Down. Don't stand there and look at me. Go lay down. All the way down. Gibson, Gibson. She's like, I'm just gonna stand here and do what I want. Okay. I've got apricot black tea tonight, it is good. Like, I haven't had it in so long. Oh my God, I forgot how good it was. Okay, now on to this guy. Let's grab the glassine. Thank you so much to Dolphin Soul. She actually sent me a list of all the stuff I always forget. And part of me is like, it's really embarrassing that she knows these are the things I forget. But glassine was on the list. I would have forgotten too. So everyone can thank Dolphin Soul for me being, having everything I needed so far. Okay. Let's start with the hat. I'm just going to start with the top and work my way down. And I can go with a darker red or I can go, let's see, we'll probably use a little bit of a dark red. This one looks pretty good. This is my Caran d'Ache. I don't know what that says. Something brown. I don't know. It's like a brick red. That's the problem with Caran d'Ache. Like you cannot, like their writing is so tiny. Now the, when it comes to choosing my colored pencils, which color or which brand I go with largely depends on what I'm, well, okay, there's a couple of factors. One, if I want super fine details and the color is available in polychromos, always polychromos hands down. They sharpen to a really fine point. Great for little, little, excuse me, little things. 
if I want it to blend really smooth, I'm doing a background and I want the smoothest blending possible, I love either my Derwent Drawing or my Derwent Light Fast. Those blend so wonderfully with, with OMS. My second choice for blending smooth like that is going to be the Caran d'Ache Luminance because the waxier it is, the more it blends. And I know that, that Derwent listed the Light Fast as a oil base. In practice, they have more, they definitely have more wax in them. Great combination of wax and oil and they blend beautifully. But they don't always have the color I want. And so sometimes I'll choose a pencil, even though I want finer detail, maybe Polychromos doesn't have the purple I want. So I'll end up going with the Light Fast in that case. So I use a combination of all three pencils and people will regularly ask which one they should buy if they can only get one brand. You're gonna be happy with any of those brands, honestly. So <laughs> just pick one. Like, I mean, if I'm doing more blending, usually I reach for my Derwent Light Fast first of the bunch. But honestly, you're not gonna go wrong with any one of those brands. Caran d'Ache Luminance, Polychromos, uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, or Derwent Light Fast. And then you can add individual pencils as you need to. So let's say you went with the Caran d'Ache Luminance, but you really, you don't get enough purples. You don't, Derwent uh, Light Fast has hands down the best purples. You can buy all of those open stocks. So if you're missing a few colors from one set or like the Derwent Light Fast doesn't have a huge selection of reds, pinks, and they have oranges, but like the reds and pinks are, are short on that one. I can get those from Caran d'Ache Luminance then since Derwent Light Fast doesn't. So, you know, you can mix and match as you need to. Okay, so this is that brownish uh, red color, which is really more of a brick red. We're just going to create the shape of the hat in there. And it doesn't need to be exact. I just want to start creating some form. We've got some little shading in there, so I'll do some little shadows. Now you can blend on top of this with your OMS if you needed to, because the OMS is, or as long as you've sprayed with your fixative first. The problem, um, would be if you didn't spray with fix it if you go on top of the OMS and it mixes in with your pan pastels and you create this weird paste So that's certainly something to be aware of Create a little bit more of the shape in there on that hat So I'm starting with this reddish brown color. You could use a magenta, anything like that. And then I'll come back through with black and define it a little bit more in a few areas to make the shadows a bit deeper. Now, the, I'm not adding highlights to this. The highlights are the base red there. If I add like a white highlight like I would with other colors, it's too pastel and now I have pink, which is not what I'm going for. If I need a highlight, I'm gonna go with an orange, like a lighter orange, apricot orange, something like that. Now I'm gonna take my black and I went with the polychromos just because the whole fine detail thing. Let's make deeper shadows in a couple of spots here. Oops, and then throw it down. Pro tip there, if you want it to be good, you gotta throw your pencils on the floor. Um, let's see, I'm gonna leave it so it looks like the white is pretty overexposed. Maybe I'll define a little bit with blues or something, purples, magentas. Probably blues, I'll just use the blues that I used in Glitch, but I'm not gonna worry about that yet. Let's come down to her eye. We've got this definite dark ring. My sister's texting me, which is weird. Funny, weird story. We had a my, our bio like story time while I draw. Um, our biological dad, he, he's no longer around. He um, he wasn't a good man. But anyway, he used to do drag racing and he had a race car named Danger Zone. And at, he sold that back in like 95, 96, I don't know, a long time ago. We years ago, or, um, so that car's been gone a very long time. I, he was a mechanic. Um, he was actually, that was the one thing he was really good at as a mechanic. Good at lying, good at drinking, good at being abusive, and a really good mechanic. Very, very skilled. Anyway, he um, sold that car forever ago. And so, I mean, it was a really cool car, old, God, I don't even remember what year, like really old. It was one of the old race cars, um, a Dodge, shoot, I don't even remember. But anyway, um, 
so this guy contacted my sister, he contacted me and my, and my sister, asking, he, he's been doing research, he's re, restoring this car, he's got this down to the bare bones, like paints off, it's all like sanded down, it is like not even the whole frame anymore, he has ripped everything out, it's so crazy, but I guess he gets these old cars and restores them. And so he was looking for information, just because it's cool to look, know the history of cars, so he had contacted us. Um, that was so odd to see. Like, he found the, an old uh, magazine article that was written about the car and got our names from that because it said he had had two daughters in our names. And so, yeah, he did a lot of research to find us. It was really kind of, it was neat to see the, the, the state the car is in. He said he'll, he'll be updating us. That's what she's texting me about. But it's not like an emergency I need to respond to right now is the point. I'm not just being terrible and totally ignoring my sister. But yeah, kind of a weird like, wow, blast from the past on that one. That car was cool. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna use, yeah, that sounds out pretty good. I'm using my white uh, uh, Castell Polychromos. We're gonna start adding some of these highlights. Define the lip right there. Frog lips. We got a highlight there. Got a highlight in the eye. Another one right around the eye here on the other side of the black. A little bit of a highlight on her eye here. I need a good green. We're going to need to start getting some shadows on the green. We've got a lot of good greens with my polychromos. So let's go with you. I'm getting olivey green. So the greens I pulled out, I don't know what I'll use. I've got chromium green opaque. I've got grass green and I've got uh, permanent green olive. Thank you to Faber-Castell for making it so that we can actually read your pencil. So let's go with, this is the chromium green opaque. I'm going to use that for some of the darker shadows on the green first. I've got a little shadow under her hat there. Oh, I have another scam, a Facebook scam to tell you guys about today too. So another warning. So you do not get scammed by, like this one did, but I'll tell you what that after I'm done with the artwork. We'll do that at the end of the stream. We've got a shadow right under her eye. Now this is important. If you look, well, you can't really see on this, but this isn't the smoothest of all the blending because I'm not gonna go over this with OMS. I'm just, you know, loosely putting it, the, everything in here. You don't have to have perfect technique to make something look fairly realistic. You do need to get your values in there though. Your dark's dark enough, your light's light enough. That's what's gonna make things start looking more three-dimensional. You, like if things aren't blended absolutely perfectly smooth, don't even worry about it. I mean, do your best, depending on what style you're going for, but also don't feel like if things aren't, if your technique isn't perfect yet, the, the artwork won't be good. Let's see, I could probably use this one. Yeah, I can use that for the same shadow red I used on her hat. We'll use that on her eye, just for the edge. I can use that for a little bit of shading here. Let's see, where else? Let's get some highlights. Let's use this grass green and see how well it shows up. Eh, not that well. It's too similar in color to what I already have. But it does give me some nice variation, so I'm gonna use it in a couple spots. It's pretty subtle though. Okay, and I can use, let's get a, two oranges. I'm gonna use the same red, that brick red that I can't read the color of. Let's get a darker orange as well. I don't know, that may not be dark enough. Maybe. This one is scarlet red, which is really more of an orangey tone. And I'm gonna do some shading on the toes. Yeah, that actually works pretty well. I want to make sure those toes, the edges are nice and clean, so I can use this for the darker area. And I want to try to leave that lighter orange from the Pam Pastel showing through as my highlight. I'd really rather not have to come through and add a lot of, besides my bright white highlights. Other than that, make my life easier and keep those showing. And I'm often asked when painting things, people want to know the colors that I'm using. 
They think that if they just knew the colors, theirs would be realistic too. It isn't about the color. First off, what colors did you use? My answer is yes. I mean, look how many different oranges are in there. <laughs> I used them all. But the other thing is your values are what you want to focus on. Get those darks dark enough, lights light enough. That's going to make a bigger difference than anything. It'll make a bigger difference than having the perfect blending technique, than having the perfect color. None of that really matters if your values are not in there right. Okay, let's get some highlights in there. We'll get some more shadows as well. I'm pushing pretty hard with this pencil to make that show up. Things a little bit too in your face. Let's tone that down. And let's see what colors do I want to use for the shadow. Kind of a brownish tone would work good. This is burnt umber. It doesn't look like burnt umber. It looks more like raw umber. How are you burnt umber? Find those shadows. This little thing on the reference photo, that's part of her dinner, and the little thing coming out of her mouth is part of her dinner, so I'm not including those. Okay, she's pretty good. Let's use the light and get a few more highlights. Just make her look a little bit shinier. No one wants a dried out frog. Okay, we're gonna move over to this metal cap thing here. This the trick to make something look metallic is just high contrast. So we're gonna be getting actual black and it's gonna seem like, whoa, that's dark. It's a little scary to do, but that's how you make something look shiny or metallic, really high contrast. I'm just gonna give the hint of detail. I'm not doing the actual detail in there. weird little circle-y guys on here. We're just gonna put dots. We're not doing that level of detail. And I'm gonna switch to that reddish color. And just for a little bit of this. And then back to the black. Don't overdo the black though, because it's gonna be really hard to get your highlights, your light lights back in there if you do too much dark. dark right around the edge here. We're going to pull that in this way. And then I'm going to use that same color I used for the shadow on the hat to fix this round. Make that a little bit better defined. I'm going to go right over it on the inside edge with white, which will smooth that out. And let's get some white, actually. Oh, okay. It's showing up okay. Just get a few little highlights on our little crinkled topper thing. And I want this just to kind of fade into that background right there. I'm just going to lighten some of that up a bit more. Let that fade out. Okay, that will work. And we'll do a little bit of definition with the white in the snow. We're just about done. This is actually a pretty quick project. We can come through and do a little bit more detailing even. 
So I'm gonna hold the pencil to the side, which I normally don't do because it gives you a more rough look, but for what we're doing here, that is totally fine. And a lot of this gets cut off by the mat. And let's pull a little bit of shade. I want to get a little bit of blue in the hat. A little bit of blue. I have to be careful not to go too much. What is the lightest blue I have? Um, I like this color blue because I need it on glitch anyway. Do I have a lighter? Probably not. Maybe. Oh, you are the lighter you away. So this is my Karen Dosh. This is genuine cobalt blue. And I just want to get a little bit of this in the snow. And I'm going to put a little bit on her hat too. I don't know if you can even see that. It's like such a small amount. Just a little in there. Let's pull a little bit on her, the white portion of her here. I want this shadow to be a little bit darker. I want that to fade more into the ornament. So it softens the transition between her and the ornament. It just kind of falls back in shadow there. We can clean up the detail of her toe. I need to add some shadows under her toes too. Let's bring back the glass scene. some just under the toe definition there. We're just pulling that shadow down into the ornaments a bit. A little bit black over that so it meshes better because I already have black back there. There we go. I'm going to just take that white right around the edge there. And I don't like, see how this kind of clumps, how it ends? I'm not loving that shadow. I'm just going to pull that in, let that fade in a bit. Much better. And I'm going to take the same thing. I'm going to pull that shadow up just a bit here. Just round it. I'm very light hand, so this is going to be really soft. You could technically go back over with your pan pastels if you want it even softer, but that gets a lot harder to control around her toes because it's such a small area. There we go. Do define the shadow a bit more here. There we go. I like how she came out. I'm really happy with her. I mean, it's glitch. Of course, I'm happy with her, but glitch as Santa worked out really well. Let me know what you guys want to see for next week's live stream. I need to know mediums and like topic suggestions. A little bit more with a shadow right here. Okay, let me show you what she looks like over here. This came out super cute. It looks, unfortunately, these never look as good in, on camera as they do on person. This definitely looks better in person. The colors just don't always work right. Um, there you, let's see, it'll be out of focus if I get too close. 
It still looks a little orangey to me there. It's definitely more red red, but the camera is kind of giving me the finger on that. So there is the glitch that stole Christmas on her ornament. And then again, this will, when it's, if somebody decides they want this, you can bid on this if you're in the US, the link is in the video description. This will come matted, so it actually is ready to pop into an eight by 10 frame. It's a five by seven, but it'll pop into a frame and look like that. So there we go. There's my glitch that stole Christmas. So um, for the giveaway, we've got a few more minutes on the giveaway, so if you wanna enter that, we'll be doing that in just a moment. And let's go ahead and start going through some of your questions that you'd sent in. Um, let me... Um, let's see. Oh, my mom says glitch is adorable. Glitch is definitely adorable. Um, there, I responded to my sister, so she doesn't think I'm ignoring her. Let's see, questions. We first have some that had come through on our Discord, our Patreon Discord, which if you're not on, let me know. We need to get you on there if you are on Patreon. And let's see, Python had asked how much liquid or Galkid, I can never say that, Galkid, it's a fast drying medium. Um, in my case, should I put in oil paint to glaze over acrylics? Well, it depends on what you're doing. That's not like a, a math problem or a cooking thing. I don't know, people measure when they cook, right? I don't know, I don't cook. But it, it's not something where it's like, you're gonna put 2% of this or one cup liquid versus, it does, there's no way for me to really say in that sense. The more liquid you add, the more translucent, or in your case, whatever mixing medium you use, the more translucent it's going to be. So, and the more it'll kind of flow, so you've got that, you're gonna have to play around and experiment with it. Use a small amount, if that paint is not flowing, like you see, like if you watch one of my lessons and that paint is not flowing well, you're not using enough. I do have a video, is it, I think it was an intro to oil painting video, I think I show my palette on that. Um, was it the apple? I know some of the, the paintings, the beginner painting tutorials, they do show the palette on, and I think that can help some, but you've just got to experiment with it. If it's too translucent, you use too much as a general rule. If the paint is too slippery, your other layers aren't sticking, you use too much. So those would be kind of some tips on, on that. Let's see. Um, let's see if we, whoop, I am not getting the right buttons, this. Okay, so some more questions that came in. We have Snow said, sorry, can I ask, is it really necessary for gesso for acrylic painting? I'm confused because they say you can use acrylic on watercolor paper. I thought maybe over watercolors. Okay, so it depends on how thick you put it on. Like typically, let's say I'm going to do, I've got a, a watercolor paper uh, sketchbook and I'm going to paint with acrylics in there. When you paint, they, they soak into the paper more than what you would want. Typically, the, unless you're trying to make acrylics work like watercolor would, which be, would be a little bit different, it will soak into that paper. It warps the paper really bad, but it also soaks in. So that we'd put gesso on the watercolor paper first so that the acrylics sit on top instead of soaking into it and kind of making a metal mess like let's say I'm trying to get this nice clean line if I've got much water mixed in there that's just soaking into the paper and spreading in a way or it can depending on how much you add but you need to add a decent amount of water with acrylics to make them flow nicely now that said let's say I did something in a watercolor painting and I decided I wanted to put acrylic on top and I don't even know why you would do that like I cannot think besides maybe some white highlights but you could use white gouache for that I can't think of a reason that putting acrylic on top of watercolor would be beneficial I'm thinking, I've got nothing. Like, I don't know why you, I, I don't know why you would do that. Um, I mean, you can, it's archival. I just don't know why you would. Like certain, when I do a mixed media, it's because there's a benefit to, like with oils versus acrylics. If I do a base layer of oils or, or acrylics and then I put oils on top, it's because acrylics dry fast, so they're saving me a ton of time. This is a great question, by the way, I love it. Um, like this is, there's so much info for me to share. It's because the, they, they are complementing each other. I'm using one to make my life easier and then I'm using the other to also make my life easier. But putting acrylics on top of watercolor, in what way is it making your life easier? I don't know. I mean, it's more opaque, I guess, but you can just use gouache. It's opaque watercolor. Like, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish that you couldn't just accomplish with your watercolors by using less water so that it's more opaque. So 
I'm not saying that there isn't a reason, I'm just not thinking of one off the top of my head of why you would mix those two. But the, the reason that we say put the gesso down first is so that the, the acrylics don't soak into it or if it's on a canvas, if it's not pre-primed. Now all the canvases that I buy from Fredericks, they're all pre-primed, so there's already gesso on them. Um, you can go ahead and paint right there. But if you don't and you paint on a, a canvas that is not primed, like it ha it's uh, like linen colored, like off-white, it's not been primed, that paint just soaks right through. It's not, there's nothing really for it to bond to either, so it causes a lot of problems later on down the road. Like there's a lot of reasons you need a gesso in the case with acrylics. But on, if it's because you're trying to do mixed media, yeah, I mean, play with it. It's waterproof. It doesn't have to have gesso, but you're going to get some weird results. It's going to be very difficult for you to blend certain techniques, like because it's going to want to keep soaking into the paper instead of setting on top like it should or just sticking on top like, like you would typically want it to. Um, other mixed medias where I say there's got to be a point. Pam pastels like I did here. Pam pastels and colored pencil. Pam pastels just save me a ton of time. So that's why it's beneficial to, to mix those mediums. Um, I'm not just mixing because I want to do mixed media. I'm mixing because pan pastels made my life easier and then colored pencils made my life easier because they're easier to control than the pan pastels. So easy, easy. That's why I chose that. Um, what other mixed mediums do I do? Watercolor. Watercolor, I don't have great control over, but dear God, they make the most gorgeous base layer for colored pencils. So I can save time by getting a watercolor base. It's really cool colors, really cool translucent, the way that, so many things about watercolor look cool, but I'm not maybe great at getting my fine details. Colored pencil makes my life easier. So that, you know, I saved my time getting my base layers with the watercolor and then I made my life easier for detail with using colored pencils. So again, when I'm doing mixed medium, it's because one medium offers something that makes my life a little easier than the other does. Or maybe it offers a look that I can't, like it's easier to get a watercolor look with watercolors than with colored pencil, obviously. So there's a reason to do it. And I just don't know what the reason for, for putting acrylic on top of watercolor would be. Is it archival? Absolutely. If you've got a reason, there's no reason, I mean, you're fine to do that. And just be aware that certain techniques like blending wet into wet is going to be a challenge because it's going to want to soak into the paper instead of setting on top like we typically want. And that's what the gesso is doing for you but when it comes to paper. It does more when it comes to canvas. Um, I hope that made sense. Uh, let's see. Deborah said, this is so inspiring. I have decided that next year's cards will be drawings from my collection of Christmas slides of our family from circa 1960s. That is awesome. That'd be so cool. Heather said, thank you for doing a Christmas glitch. You're welcome. Thank you guys for suggesting it. Uh, Fly Me to the Moon said, what medium did you use to sculpt for Dragon? So his tank, you, you'll get more information on the video because it's a lot to explain, but I did a base of... I built it with uh, foam, like insulation foam from Home Depot, glued it together with silicone and these little spiky things, these metal pieces. I think I took most of them out though once it was in. Anyway, um, glued those together. Then I took a spray foam. So I used both the, oh, what brand is it? I forget, but it's a pond spray foam and then a regular one for like all around it carved all of that and then coated everything with like, I think it, did they do four or five coats? I think it was four coats of sanded grout. Let that dry completely. And then I had, you, I let it dry for four days in between each layer. So it was a long process. And then I was able to use acrylic paints to paint the rock. And then I sealed it all with Mod Podge. So those were the supplies that I used. And it was all in a dubia enclosure. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to tell you guys about these. Like they're super inexpensive for how, I think for a 120 gallon tank. So that's big. It was like $260. I don't know. I got it on sale. So that, but even full price, I think, are three hundred for an enclosure that big. That is unheard of. But they're PVC. The front glass, the front is glass, but the sides are just super. Th they're amazing. It was amazing to work with. I am so. I can't wait to tell you guys more about it. But yeah, that's um, that's what I used to do that. But it was like when I say sculpted, because you used the foam and the spray foam to kind of carve in these shapes, and then the grout on top finished off the sculpture, I guess, and rounding things off to make it more like a rock instead of foam. So I'll show you in the video. Uh, let's see. Stephanie said, do you use the same paper for pan pastels and colored pencil pieces? Yes. Well, I use a lot of different paper for colored pencil. I sometimes use sanded paper and that can work for pan pastels great as well. Sanded paper, my Lux Archival is hands down the, the best. They're the only ones I use because they're only the only sanded paper that is archival front and back. I've used pastel mat. I don't use that often, but it's cool. I haven't tested, I need to test if that is actually archival front and back. Um, people have asked me, I'm not sure. Um, they claim it is, but I don't know. Um, I use Arches Hot Press watercolor paper is another total favorite one for me. What else do I use? That's the main things that I use in the Canton Me 10s. 
Do I prefer it to others? How do you frame it? So the way that, um, as far as do I prefer it to others, I like all of them for different reasons. So I can't really say I prefer it to others. It's comes in colors, which is cool for live streams like this and the pastels and the colored pencils stick great to it. But if I want something like, the, if I'm going for super, super, super realistic, I'm gonna go with my Arches Hot Press. Um, and that's, but I'm not using Pam Pastels in that case. So let me pull up this. So how do I frame it? I tape this, so I will actually remove this and I will tape it. I use an acid-free pH neutral tape right along to tape the artwork to the back of this. This actually has a board after that. So the artwork is taped to this just along the edges. Again, pH neutral, acid-free. And then I use another pH neutral, acid-free tape um, along the edges of this. And then there's a backing that I buy a kit for this. And there's a backing that sticks on top of that. Golden State Art on Amazon is where I get these and then it goes into a little bag when I ship it. So, and then this just pops into any eight by 10 frame, like you would frame anything. So it goes behind glass. Uh, let's see. Um, Stephanie said, Pam pencils are great. I got the blender, but haven't used it. Anyone else try it? I've used it and it's cool, but you don't need it. Certainly, as you can see, I didn't use it tonight, but sometimes it can make color like it just makes it go a lot further than it would. Like it, it blends, it glides more smoothly over the paper. So there's that, but it also makes it a little bit more translucent, but it is cool. Definitely play with it. Um, Sheena said, hello everyone. I'm so grateful for these live streams. It's 2 a.m. here in England and I cannot sleep, uh, sleep a wink. How are all your animals? Well, good morning. Um, your schedule is weird like mine. Everybody's doing great. Well, I had to euthanize one fish earlier, so that kind of sucked. I'm pretty sure it was an old age thing. The dart fish don't live super long, so who knows how old he was when I got him. Um, they're like two years, so if he was a year old, he was towards the end um, of his little life, but I didn't want him to suffer because he was definitely like, he was at the end. So that part sucked. Oh, sad news. But, um, I mean, I hadn't seen them much anyway, because when they get to the end of their life, they just hide all the time. So, um, yeah, that sucked. But all the other animals are great. We're going to a bird show on Saturday, so I'm hoping maybe some new branches for tuna, some new, I don't know. I actually am hoping to see some cool cages. I, I wish there was more unique looking bird cages, but they all look the same. Like everyone uses the same ones. So I may have to do something custom if I want something really cool for tuna. But, um, and I need to talk myself out of not getting a second canary because they can't share a cage because canaries, they, they don't play nice. Um, I'd rather not. I, I don't know, I don't need two birds. One bird is perfect. Tuna gets to be out of his cage more if he's by himself. So yeah, I just need to not, I don't need another one. But I do want to get a name of breeders for, you know, in the future when tuna has left us. And yeah, so anyway, that's my plan. But um, Matt wants to go and look at bird toys and all that. So that, we're looking forward to that. But all the other animals, Gibson's great. He hasn't had any problems since he went to emergency a couple weeks ago. We we're pretty convinced he just wanted to go so he could visit with the nurses. Um, yeah, everyone's really, besides that fish, everyone is doing great. All my other fish are doing great. Um, yeah, my coral is like growing so fast. That tank is gorgeous. I need to get some more videos of you guys for you guys of that. Okay, let's see. Um, how did I make, uh, that's actually a good question. Dolphin Soul said, how do you make the snow pop if doing it on white paper versus gray? I would probably put a light gray down first and then white on top of it or light blue, like the hint, so you're drawing the shadows, but leaving the white of the paper, so you're doing that reverse. Um, why can't I think of the name of it? You're drawing the shadows instead of the actual subject. So that would be another way to go, let the white of the paper show. So either of those two would work. It's easier to do the gray first in that case. Like if it were me, I'd probably do like a light bluish gray and then white on top of it. I think that's a bit easier than doing the reverse can be a bit of a challenge for a lot of people too not overdo those shadows because they would be very, very subtle. Uh, JL said, I see you, you love using colored pencils with Pam Pastels. Have you ever used pastel pencils? I hate them. Do you prefer the colored pencils over pastel pencils? <clears throat> so pastel pencils look beautiful. <clears throat> I have a glitch in my throat apparently. Um, they look beautiful, but I am a freak and it the feel of pastels, that dry, chalky, oh, I just get the heebie-jeebies even thinking about it. Like, I can't. It's one of my crazy person features of I just, I can't. I did when I was younger. I used to love pastels. I can't do them now. They're, I mean, I can use them. I know how, but the whole time I've got, like, I'm getting 
cr I'm cringing the whole time. The feel of them freaks me out. And you think, why don't you wear gloves? Because that's not comfortable. I hate wearing gloves. Like I wear them as little as possible. Um, I mean, I use them for my animals when needed and that's about it. So, or pulling weeds. But yeah, like I'm not enjoying my, the process of art if I have to have gloves on my hands. That's just not, anyway. So yeah, that is my thing there. Um, for, pa for pastel pencils, I recommend Jason Morgan. He's amazing. His classes are amazing. He's got Patreon as well. He's a good friend of mine. So um, he's from Wales, so he's got a cool accent. Bonus there. So yeah, check him out if you want pastel lessons. Jason Morgan. He's here on YouTube too. Uh, Kevin said, slightly corny, but any New Year's art resolutions? Not currently making art, but when I get back into painting, I'd like to focus on being more expressive emo and emotional with color versus being accurate. So yeah, that's actually, it's not so much a New Year's resolution. It's just a recent realization of, I have been doing so many lessons for Patreon that are lessons. I mean, the lessons are good, but I've not been doing much for me that I'm excited about for me. I'm getting artwork done because I know that that's what people want for lessons. I've not done good, like I rarely do surrealism anymore. And that's like my passion is surrealism. Um, so I'm actually working on the idea. So coming up, I'll just tell you some of the stuff coming up. One, I want to do more surreal stuff. I want to do more advanced stuff too. And some people have, have requested that. So that's a bonus. What I think I'll do on Patreon is like, here's the bird out of this surreal painting, just the lesson on the bird. Here's a lesson on portions of it. So, cause those paintings take like six weeks. They're long to get those done. But yeah, I definitely want to start getting more surrealism done that I've just been doing the bare minimum of, you know, what's needed. Well, I, I say bare minimum, I work nonstop, but um, to make patrons happy, but I need to get some more, I definitely need to get more surrealism um, in there as well. Um, Let's see. Oh, we've got the giveaway person is cool. We've got the winners. I will actually, why don't we just go ahead and announce the winners now for the giveaway? Okay. So for the mini print winners, we've got Elaine Morse from Arizona, Carrie Newell from the UK. So yeah, we've got a UK winner. Uh, we've got Angela Sherman from Idaho, Darlene Jollymore from Canada, another person outside of the US, and Teresa Gamok. I know how to say her name, I should, because she's a friend, I know her. She's like, she was an in-person student from Texas. So uh, if you're watching, and we'll, I'll message you guys over on um, MeWe as well. But if you're watching, I need you to message me, private message me your, don't post it publicly, private message me your address. So I can, some of you guys, have your addresses from uh, Patreon, but I need the others. So don't make me look it up, just send it to me anyway. Um, so congratulations for the mini print winners. I will be sending those out. And actually, if you have, if you have a subject matter that you especially like, like I want something with whales, I want something with birds, let me know. Let me know when you give me your address because um, I probably can, can make you happy. Um, let's see, and then our winner, the grand winner of the the ornament. Where are you? Come back. Why are you hiding from me? Come here. Oh, I can reach it. I don't even think I put it there. I lost it. Oh, the grand winner of the painting. I have to get it. You have to come out for the grand announcement. Except I lost it. Why did I lose it? How did I lose it? Oh, here it is. So for the grand prize winner is Casey Chenault from Kentucky. Congratulations if you're watching uh, Casey. So yay, and thank you to Rob for donating. This whole giveaway thing was Rob's idea. So congratulations everybody. Yay. Okay, I have goosebumps because that's exciting. I don't know, I'm a dork. I don't leave the house. It doesn't take much to make me get all happy. Okay. That's so fun. So yeah, message me if you're watching. Make sure to message me on MeWe, your addresses. Let's see. Maybe we'll have a couple more. Maybe we'll do a couple more giveaways. I'm gonna go grab some of the mini prints. So we'll do a couple more. I can send a couple more out. Um, so the giveaway is not over yet. Nick's like, oh crap, are you serious? Uh, let's see, we're gonna take a couple more after I get some more questions in. Uh, where were we? Python said, Someday could you show us sometime how you design your surreal paintings digitally? Yeah, and I actually have. I think I have videos showing that. But yeah, I've done live streams where we designed one. Um, so that probably would be the best. I 
remind me, you may mess message me on, or not message me, but like post in Discord or something. Um, Cause I don't know if it's still public. Cause I had unlisted a bunch of old uh, live streams cause I wasn't sure if it was helping my channel or hurting my channel. So I don't know if they're still there. Uh, Tessa want, Teresa wants something done in graphite. Okay, so the reason that I don't tip, do graphite in live streams is too slow. I don't even know if I could make something look cool in graphite, honestly, with how little time we have for a live stream. So that's why I don't, that's why you've not seen that. Like I could do charcoal fast. Graphite just takes longer to make anything cool. I'm not sure how to, how to do a whole piece. Um, unless it was just like a simple, here's how to draw a single marble. We could do that because we have had that, but it's not something that like we wouldn't have a, auction for that because it's a marble you know not like a big drawing but i do like the idea <coughs> um blending the moon said i'm thinking of creating a background of all birch tree i remember in the fox tutorial you said that the poor hair dryer would be good for trees would you elaborate i don't remember saying that i mean i sure i, I think i do because i blew the hair dryer so it was just all vertical for the the poor if that's what I'm thinking. I can't elaborate because it's been too long and I don't remember what I was talking about. So there's that. I don't know. Um, I, whatever I said in the video, <laughs> that is not helpful at all. Um, let's see. Shana said, I use acrylic on watercolor, water soluble pencil as the pencil is easier to control and then activate it, let it dry and then I glaze acrylic on top as everything is already established. Huh, that'll work. So yes, it can be done. Like I said, it's, it's not an archival issue. I just didn't really like, I don't see the point. Um, but yeah, that would work. Zay said, have you made an update video on your tips for pricing artwork? I know you talked about it before, but it was a while ago. It's the same. I mean, I could, no, I'm probably not gonna make another video on that anytime soon because it's the same information. Like I haven't really changed it. I sometimes go against my own advice, like having sales, I don't really recommend because people will just wait for the sales, but I don't put my like more expensive stuff on sale. So it doesn't really affect that, I guess. But um, yeah, that, no, nothing's changed. It really is the same. Um, I don't have anything there. Oh, Oreo Beagles. Oh, they're gonna be excited. Do you boys want a super chat from Oreo Beagle? Yay, say thank you. Oh, it's been a while. I know you're probably starving, huh? I know, big sigh, was so hungry. Didn't think you'd ever get fed again, huh? There you go. Good boys, thank you so much. Um, let's see. That's it, go lay down. We're only at 912, oh my gosh, guys, we need more, more questions. Actually, you boys lay down. I'm gonna go get some mini prints to grab for more giveaways. Lay down. Cow's just staring at me. Thank you so much. Okay, let me, oh, you can still bet on glitch. Um, let me go grab a couple of mini prints so you see what we are giving away. You may be able to hear me partway through. I don't know if you can still hear. It'll, it usually starts to cut out when I get out here. Okay, so I just grabbed a couple to show you. And these are actually the prints that if you're a Patreon um, at the, the top tier, you guys get this with a postcard and you're a sticker. Oh, I should have grabbed stickers too. I didn't grab one. Um, you'll get a sticker in the giveaway as well. But they're just little mini prints. You can mount them and frame them if you want. It's kind of an odd size. You could also just like get, if I were to display these, I think I would do one of those boards that are like the, the cork board, but the lines that you like, put sticker or put photos in. I think that would look neat with a bunch of these. But anyway, um, that is, these are the mini prints. So we can, um, Nick, whenever you want to announce the next one, we can choose a winner and it doesn't matter of the country, but we've got like, these are what patrons get. You get that, like this is one of the, the previous mini prints. 
Actually, this one was one that was a card. I used to do them as greeting cards, but honestly, the mini print just made more sense. They, they screwed up one of my orders and sent those, and so I made them replace them. And then when I'm looking at the two, I'm like, I kind of like those better. So I like the idea of a mini print better than a, a like, why would there be a, a greeting card? That doesn't even make sense. So yeah, am I behind on Patreon? I absolutely am. I, act, I just spent yesterday morning and the morning before, I got, Octobers that should have gone out last month. They should have gone out because they always go the month after. It's just that's the way Patreon is lined up. But that should have gone out in November. And I just finished them yesterday. So I need to buy stamps. Those are ready to go. And then I'm going to do next month or next week. I'm working on December. So yes, I, I'm always behind. But yes. Uh, let's see. Dragon and mixed media is what you want. Actually, Dragon and his scales are so detailed. I'm gonna be doing a digital painting with him soon. He just shed, and so he's all pretty. He's orange, he's his color is so gorgeous right now because he did just shed. That is coming. Um, let's see. Our next winner of a card is Stacy Anderson from Texas. So again, message me over on MeWe, your address if you're watching. <coughs> um, just send me a personal message. So I posted in MeWe, you should be able to click my profile and then just message me that way. Um, let's see. Can I selfishly ask for a bearded dragon for a live? Very selfishly, that's what Aline wants. Aline has a bearded dragon herself. I got her hooked. Um, it, I think he's too detailed. Like the scales are so involved. I think it would be very similar. Remember the bee project that went horribly wrong and I had to finish it and made a new video out of it? Yeah, I think that's what would happen. Like there's so much detail there. So there is gonna be a dragon video for sure. I'm gonna do some artwork. Um, the next one I wanted to do was a digital painting, but yep, that because I want a sticker for my planner, which means you'll get a sticker for your planner too. I share my, I'm a dork. Aline's a dork too, so I'm telling on her. We have we do digital planning, which is basically digital scrapbooking for dorks. Because I don't know why I think I need a to-do list for every day, but you get to decorate it and you have stickers and you have all these things and we're like, yes, I am very super into it and I make stickers like of glitch and stuff and then I send them to Aline and she gets to use them too. So yes, I want I like doing the digital painting stuff because it makes for good stickers for my digital, I'm a dork. I'm, I'm gonna stop outing myself as such a dork. But moving on, um, let's see. They want a picture of you, Dragon. You're apparently popular. Um, oh, that just jumped too far. Actually, I think. Our next winner for a mini print is Ava Stovall Stov Stov in Alaska. Oh, you are cold up there. From Alaska to Texas, we are far away on weather there. Um, what is my, okay, what is my next big objective in my art career? Also in life, um, life, I don't know. You'd think I'd have an answer to that and I just don't. Um, my art objective, really right now, lately I've been very focused on getting my channel doing better because YouTube, the way that their search, when they kill the search function, people like me who never, like my videos were never optimized to do well. Like my click through rates are bad because my titles and my thumbnails are never good. My, um, maybe my content's boring. That could be the case too. So I never did well as far as like the, my, my analytics performing well enough that YouTube's like, we're gonna put this in front of everybody. But I always did really well in search. So like someone would type in how to paint a frog in acrylics and I would come up. They don't, the search doesn't work anymore. So, and this is a complaint for all artists. We'll tell you the same thing. We do not get views anymore and it's affecting my income as, as a whole, not just from, well, actually my YouTube ad revenue is fine. My issue is that I can't find new people who would be interested in taking my classes with Patreon. And it's like, oh, so that's kind of what my main focus has been. I signed up with a coach a uh, like video coach who's been giving me advice on making better thumbnails. Like we just got to that point of like improving thumbnails and he's been giving me, well, you know, your general advice. So we'll see if that makes a difference. I don't know. I'm terrible at thumbnails and titles. Like, and I do AB testing with this one service because I apparently am going to pay for all the services, but I do AB testing with that, which means like every few hours they, ch they flip from one thumbnail to the next to see which gets more clicks. 
I never guess right on what's going to perform better. Like I'm that bad. I never get it right. I'm so bad at it. So yeah, that is definitely like, that's been my focus is getting that. And also, holy crap, Rob, Rob said, th oh, gosh, thank you for the super chat. He said treat for Matt, but he has to come get it like the puppies. Just kidding. I would tell him that, but he's in his PJs and I am not bringing him in his pajama pants in this room. Um, but the boys, just because. I'll, how about this? We'll, we'll give the boys instead and Matt's going to be excited. You know what? And that's actually really nice because Matt's birthday is on Friday. So I'm telling him that's his birthday present from you. So thank you so much. Do you guys want to want to steal dad's super chat? You want a super chat from Rob? Even though it wasn't really for you. Thank you so, so much. Seriously. Yeah, Matt's a comic nerd like, like Rob, as Rob said. There you, this one's yours. Good boy, you've been so gentle all night. Are you sick? Are you dying? Why, why are you being so gentle? It's weird. See, I'm, I'm proving to everyone you're a liar. Oh, you can't even see over here. There he is. So I'm gonna to prove to everyone you're a liar. You, why are you wet? Go lay down. <laughs> lay down. Go lay down. Wipe that off. Thanks, Gibson. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again, Rob. Did we have a, I don't know if they switched. I think that's where they were. All the way down, Gibson. He's like, I'm gonna do 80 circles first. Um, so yeah, next big objective in my art career. Really, I just wanna get back to doing some more surreal stuff. Like right now, nothing, like, this is how I look at it. What I put, when I paint something, do I want it on my site? Do I feel like this is a good show off, impress people piece? I don't produce, I produce good for lessons, but nothing that I'm like, that was my idea, that I came up with that, that's super unique. I don't do it often anymore because I'm just so busy doing the lessons. And it's not that I couldn't turn that into a lesson, but yeah, that is that is kind of my goal for art right now. Um, let's see. Thank you to those of you who have already messaged me about your mini print addresses. Let's see. Uh, Python said, can you demonstrate the design process? Okay, so we got that on the, okay, can you demonstrate the designing process and works like cutting images, changing lighting? I think I did that. I think that the video, I think that was done in the live stream. I don't know about changing lighting, but we talked about that for sure in that live stream where I designed a, a surreal piece that we then drew. Which one was it? I don't even remember what it was, so it's gonna be hard for you to find. I'll have to look for it, because I don't remember what I called it. I don't remember when it was. Don't remember what the thumbnail looked like. I don't remember anything, but I know it exists. So maybe just type in designing the next surreal, I don't know. Um, see, so and type in Lockery and designing surreal and see what happens. But I've done that, um, and I did it live. So yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to see. Um, I am doing another, I am working on a new surreal piece. I know that it's gonna be, my plan so far is a forest. I want fish instead of birds. I want um, a whale or a shark, probably a whale. I think I'm gonna go with orcas. I thought, I know I have a few just different ideas. I've been collecting things like, when I see a photo that a photographer posts, I save it because I like the colors in it, not because I'm copying anything about it other than, oh my gosh, I love like that ultramarine blue and this orange together. Like I want that to be the theme of the painting or color theme, color color palette. So um, maybe I'll do the snowy forest. I have, seriously, like I'm working on the ideas, working through the ideas of this one, but maybe I'm trying to think of how I could record the design process because it's kind of like the design process Maybe that would just make a good video in general because the design process happens over the period of weeks. So it's kind of hard to, to just show you real quick how I did it. Um, am I, okay, I got that one. Shana said, I've recently been listening to Alice in Wonderland on Audible when I sleep and you calling a dog, cow, a dog, a cow questions which world is actually my reality. He's the bad cow. <laughs> um, and I named my canary tuna, so yeah. I've got a cockatiel named chicken. I've got, like all our birds are named after food, sushi. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it, it's weird over here. All right, let's see. <coughs> uh, 
um, where am I? Flight Meeting of the Moon said, no, it was the, the crackling effect. Yeah, I don't remember. Honestly, I, I say, I talk a lot. I don't remember what I say. Um, whatever I said in the video, I can't elaborate on it more because I don't remember exactly. Like, even if you told me what I said, I wouldn't necessarily, it's not going to put me necessarily right now in the mindset that I was there because I just don't remember right now. Um, that is not helpful at all, and I apologize. Uh, let's see. We've got Zay said, do you remember the 90s show called Second Noah? That's what your house reminds me of. I don't. I don't think I watched sh TV in the 90s that much. I don't even remember of anything called that. Uh, I was a teenager, you know, high school at that time, so I don't think I watched that much TV. Uh, Python said, I can't find anything on your channel about designing reference photos. I already searched up design surreal piece and your YouTube. Let me see real quick because I probably unlisted it. Uh, let me go to manage my videos. Oh, it would have to be under search live. How I design. Okay, let me see if this is listed. Oh, it's unlisted. That's why. Okay, let me copy this. Copy that, and I will put that in the chat. There's the direct link for it. I think that was it. Designing a surreal, surreal painting, live stream, and artist hangout. So yeah, there we go. That one was one of them. Um, but it was unlisted, so that's why you couldn't find it. Mm, let's see. The show is about a family who had a zoo of animals in their suburban home. Do you guys plan on adding any more fur babies? Fur, no feather, maybe. Um, but well, I may get, uh, I don't want three dogs, but for safety purposes, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to have a dog who barked to notify me if somebody is, you know, something nefarious is going on because things that have been happening in the neighborhood. So if, don't want three dogs. I really do not want three dogs. I mean, I would love another dog, but I really, like, I know what breed I want. I know what breeder I'll probably go, like, I have to contact them, but I'm, I don't, I'm not, I love just two dogs is the perfect number of dogs for me. Cause I mean, I, and it's, if that was all I had, three dogs would be no problem, but I have a lot of dogs. So, or not a lot of dogs, a lot of other animals, you know, my interests are all over the place. So yeah, get a chihuahua, they're extra vicious. No, it'll be, a, it'll probably be a Doberman, I think is going to be my next breed. But um, Doberman or a Ridgeback. And eventually I would like to have a Doberman and a Ridgeback, but not when I have the current boys. I know, I hate talking about when they're no longer here, and, but they're only five or like they'll be six this in April and May. So all goes well, they're going to be with me a very long, you know, at least five more years, minimum. So, and I'm like, ugh. Where would I even put another dog crate and feeding them? Because I feed raw is so horribly expensive. So I really like, I could make the sacrifice if I need to for, you know, to feel safe. And I would love it. I say I'm getting it for safety purposes, but it's not like you're, I'm going to have a dog that I'm not, uh, don't adore. That isn't even possible. But it's, yeah, God, I don't want three dogs, but I may need to. We'll see. We'll see how the neighborhood goes. Because, um, yes, yeah, stuff. Um, yeah. But we, um, birds would be the only thing. I could see Matt getting himself another parrotlet. I considered getting another canary so that there were two talking in the room and I kind of weighed back and forth. I'm sure Tuna would like to have another bird to talk to. He's with me all day because I mean, I work in the office all day. So he's in there with me all day. He's not lonely by any means. And because he's the only one, he gets to be out almost all the time. But if I have a second canary, I, if I do a female, they if they're flying loose, they'll probably be fine. If there was any fighting, I would just go ahead and separate them at that point. But another male, I don't know. I don't know how well they would do. And again, they'd have their own cages, but I don't even have room for two. I don't need two cages. I don't need two birds. Like tuna does, tuna's perfect as my only little bird in there. So yeah, no, I, I don't have any immediate plans at all for any. That's just the, yeah. Um, yeah, no massive for me because they drool way too much. 
Like I am neurotic about cleaning and walking around the house, getting the drool every time they shake their head and it goes flying all over the place. That is just not, that does not fit my home decor. <laughs> Um, and like Great Danes, I love Danes, but they don't live that long, like their life is expectancy. So you, you know, you got your pros and cons. I do a lot of research on stuff. I used to show dogs. So I have a, like, yeah. Um, I really, really would like a Belgian Malinois. That was another one of my favorite, favorite, like I wanted one so bad, but that's like, it's a German shepherd on crack, basically. Um, they're great. If, if that was my only animal, if I didn't have my fish and I didn't have any other dogs, I think that that would be a breed I was more interested in, but because I like doing dog training and they're great for that, but I'm not in a place in my life where I have the time to dedicate to the training that you would need to keep that dog mentally stimulated enough not to eat my house. So yeah, that's probably not my breed. Um, I think the Doberman would be a good level of how much training I would put in, um, you know, fitting in. And again, hopefully not now. I'm hoping not to get one for years, but we'll see. Um, have I read the comics? Oh, that's not about me. That's for Rob. Um, Allison said, your techniques for making metal and bubbles pop, no pun intended, are amazing. Do you have a special technique for painting glass to make it shine and images look correctly distorted through them? So I don't have, I mean, I did a glass jar on Patreon. So if you look at, there was one, a rose and a bee on Patreon. If you're on there, that video is there. I don't think it's on YouTube. But um, that one is available. But the, the trick to make the glass look, to make anything look shiny, high contrast, your bright, bright highlight your black right next to it, and then whatever the color of the jar is. So that is very, um, it just, it's always to get that shine, high contrast. And then as far as the distortion, get a photo and look at it. So like a rose stem is coming in, it hits that glass and it's like over here now, it doesn't connect all the way down. It depends on the glass and how it's hitting and where the camera angle is. It depends on many things, but get a photo and just copy what you see, even though it feels wrong. Cause you're like, well, that doesn't line up at all. So that, that is it. Um, Dolphin Soul said, next week I'm thinking an intense dolphin with head popping out of the water with or without a holiday hat. You know, uh, I have the tail, need the face. Can't supply reference photo. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. Um, do I help tuna with pin feathers? No, canaries aren't fan, can, most canaries, unless they were hand fed and even then, they don't like to be handled. They, and this is why I want to get a breed, a name of a breeder. Canaries are so prone to just random heart attacks. Poof, heart attack. Like that is their thing. Like he's getting to the point where I'm gonna have to trim his nails soon. And I'm like, oh, I hate doing their nails because that could make a, anything can make them have a heart attack. You just loud noise, bam, heart attack. So that is just an unfortunate thing with canaries. So, um, which is why I want to have a breeder's name on hand for if that happens, because that's how I get over my sadness is finding someone new to love. But hopefully Matt never dies because that's not going to work out so well for me. I'm like going and finding some random person on the street. I need someone new to love, but that's how I deal with, with loss. But um, don't worry. I tell him that all the time. It's an ongoing joke. It's not as mean as it sounds. But yeah, it's, um, that's like, their thing. So no, I am not touching his head. I am not going to stress him out. And they don't want to be handled like that anyway. Now, some people have hand fed canaries to where the canaries want to come and sit on their shoulder and stuff. Fine. But tuna definitely was not that. Um, but even that's kind of iffy. So no, I'm not trying to handle him. I, I try to handle him as little as possible. He, they, birds, they take care of their own pin feathers. They don't need the help of another bird. That is something that they can typically do on their own. It's actually fairly uncommon that they can't take care of it on their own. And I know people will talk about on forums like, oh, you have to sit there and do this. And you have to break up the pin feathers. You can, and it's fun to do on a bird that lets you do it, but um, it's not necessary either. Like there are plenty of birds in nature who don't they're not social outside of breeding. They don't have someone to clean, to do their pin feathers and they molt fine. Like it's not, it's, it's not a necessary thing. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing a pit. Um, I have too many other animals and no, and I'm not going to get in the argument, the pros and the cons of the pit. They are, they're just not, there's many, I, I've known people who had them that I loved them. They're not my breed. That's for sure. Um, there is some questionable, questionable breeding practices on a dog that has way too much power for such questionable breeding practices. And oh, it's how you raise them. <laughs> you don't understand how, how genetics work. Um, 
I cannot convince my dogs not to chase a rabbit because genetics tell them you see a bunny, you chase it no matter how much mom's calling you back and how much training has been done. Genetics and instinct kick in and I am, it's not the breed. And I know so many people, I know plenty of people who have amazing pits, but it's, I don't trust how many are bred so poorly to where you have a mentally unstable dog because of poor breeding practices combined, well, and it can be combined with bad owners, but that, um, that is a lot of power for a very, um, not all of them are unstable though. So that's the thing. It's just very hit and miss and no, not for me. Um, God, I sound like a snob. And the funny thing is pits aren't always the best watchdog. That's not what they were bred for. They were bred to fight other dogs, to fight other animals. So yeah, not, not really what I'm going for here. And then before anyone gets mad at me, I'm glad you love your pit bulls. They're adorable. I love how they look. It's not my breed, just like I'm not a cat person. I love that you have cats, but they don't fit in my lifestyle. Oh, people get mad at me. Um, and there's where all my thumbs downs came from because apparently people get like weird if you don't like their breed. Like. There are plenty of breeds I don't like that are not a fit for me. And people get so mad when you're like, yeah, that's not for me. Like, wouldn't it be better that I know what breed fits my lifestyle so that dog doesn't end up in the humane society? Not that any dog I have would ever end up in a humane society. But like, it, this is why it's good to know the breed you're getting. So you know you got a breed that fits your lifestyle. That's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Um... DJ said, I posted it. Can you check to see if you got it? If I got what? The address? Oh, probably. I don't know. Um, let's see. Um, if I didn't, I'll message you. So it's not the end of the world. Um, like I'll, I'll get it. Although I do love that you are making my life easier by making sure. Why are you? I'm not invite. This is why I didn't want to check it right now because maybe he's being stupid. Chats, I don't need to invite friends. Why are you trying to do that to me right now? Okay, let's see. I've got Elaine. I've got Teresa. I've got Nick. I've got... I'm going to have to look on my uh, the computer, not the app. The app, they changed it and I can never find anything now because it probably is under... Okay, chat requests, I bet. No, that's August. No. No, I don't have it unless I have... Angela, Tessa, Teresa, Elaine, and that's it so far. Okay, I'll message you. So we'll, uh, anyone I don't get it from, I'll, I'll message if it's not coming through. Uh, Elaine, let's see, what? Bernie's Mountain Dog, don't live long enough. Um, hearing dog, hearing the dart frogs, yeah, they're being loud. Um, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, my mom and I were just talking about them. They're so gorgeous, but yeah, they, they do not live long enough. Like I would love a Borzoi or one of Borzois and Borzois and Irish Wolfhounds. I'm a sighthound person. I think that's where I need, like, that's the, the, my favorites are sighthounds, but Borzoi, as much as I love them, they just do not live their life expectancy being a giant breed. They do not live long enough. And so, yeah, um, yeah, Elaine said, same reason we decided not to get a pit every, or between my daughter and chickens, et cetera. I just didn't want to take a risk, so I'm with you on that. And it's not like people, I saw the stupidest video. It was a, um, oh, hold on. We're going to have a, have treats from Hitomi. Do you boys want a super chat? I think that's a yes. Uh, that didn't switch. Why aren't you switching? Oh, yeah, you did. There you go. Oh, my gosh, you've been through half this jar of treats now. It's been a good night, huh? Oh, that's a good cow. He has not chomped my hand once tonight, which is like weird. Uh, no, we're not going to lick the floor. Go on. Go lay down. Gibson. Gibson. Go lay down. Go lay down. We're not licking. No, you're not licking the floor. Stop it. God. Thank you so much. Lay down. Lay down. All the way. And down. Gibson. Gibson. Oh my gosh, seriously, dog. Um, what was I talking about? Um, let's see.
So, Caroline, um, she had said the issue with Doberman is they break your heart faster, their life expectancy. So, so here's the thing and why I had always held off on Dobermans. They, well, one, when I used to work at animal hospitals, everyone said they were more prone, like they don't develop a resistance to parvo, but I'm not finding that information right now. I don't take them anywhere where I'd really be exposed, so it's not that big of a deal. But the bigger thing is that they all have, like this genetic heart thing runs in every line and they can be running and playing two years old, bam, heart attack. It's like a canary all over again. But they, most good breeders now, they have a thing. They'll let you borrow the device. They test, you like annually test the dog's heart and find out if it has that condition. It goes on a medication and you're good. I actually talked to some breeders about this um, specifically. So that's where, because one of my friends shows them and I'm like, don't you worry about that? Is that not an issue? And she's like, oh no, this is what we do. I'm like, I didn't know they had a solution to that problem. So yeah, no, they're um, they're good. Any of their bigger dogs, the bigger they are, the, the lower their life expectancy is, but they're, they're more like not too dissimilar from a greyhound. So yeah, um, but I was, when I found out that they had that heart thing, like that there was a solution to the heart thing, that there was a medication and it's a cheap medication. You do have to keep up on te the testing though. Like this isn't just get a dog, he looks healthy. Like make, you have to do that. But so um, we'll see. Um, let's see. Where was I? I was rambling about something where I got, before I got distracted, but I don't remember what it was. Um, let's see. Alice said, hi, Lisa, I just discovered your channel and I'm super inspired to try colored pencils. That's awesome. Yay. And welcome. Um, Moody Roan said, a mini schnauzer. I, mini is not, I don't do small, no more small dogs for me. I have my Italian greyhounds and the, yeah, no, the whole, we have potty issues. Yeah, that's not for me. Like when I was younger, it didn't bug me as much. It's like, you know, you get your carpet cleaner and you just deal with it. And now as I've gotten older, I mean, I have the tile floors because of that. Cause I'm all weird. I've gotten really neurotic about clean, like things being clean, th like organized is one thing, but also clean. Like, okay, my studio is a bit of a mess right now, but like everything has to be clean. I'm so like, bird cages my well the bird i take care of uh, matt is less neurotic uh, for me but the house the everything every like i can't do little dogs nope that is a nope for me they're adorable but nope i actually want a dog who is a decent watchdog too so like no one's afraid of the snouser if i'm walking a snouser he's not deterring anybody so um and that's the other thing like going on a walk now luckily the boys are big enough not everyone realizes a greyhound is useless so they just see you're walking a large dog and they're probably like and eh, not worth the trouble but um the doberman yeah i don't think anyone's gonna you know there's certain breeds that people see and they're like yeah i'm probably i'm probably not gonna it's not worth my time so yeah um let's see and the snowsers are freaking adorable, but yeah, no, not what I, if I'm doing a third dog, it's got to, it's got to do a job. Um, let's see, where are we? Nick said her next dog uh, must have big, sharp, pointy teeth and an attitude. Oh, well, if that's all I needed, I've got them right there. Gibson's got like that boy, him and his, you walk towards him with nail clippers and he's already screaming, like not even kidding you. He's done that. And a neighbor heard it and he's like, he joked, he thought I was beating my dog. I'm like, no, I walked towards him with nail clippers and he started screaming. So yeah, I've got pointy teeth and an attitude. It just doesn't, not, not, at, not at the right time. Um, let's see. DJ said, can you check to see, okay, yeah, I don't, so far I don't have it, so I'm going to have to message you. Alicia said, it seems luminance and polychromos are great pencils. Which set should I prioritize getting? Are there pros and cons for each? How do I decide? So I, already, I talked about that earlier. Um, luminance, polychromos, and Derwent Lightfast are my three go-tos. You will be happy with any one of those. I like... Like, it's just, if I could only use one, I'd probably go with my Derwent Lightfast, but... I'd also probably add a few other colors in there. The thing that I don't love with the Derwent Lightfast is, at least on the set that I have, I think they have a bigger set, but they didn't have a lot of good reds and pinks. They have the best purples of any brand by far. Um, so they're kind of my go-to. Um, 
any three, any one of those three, you're not going to be unhappy. So, and all the other pencils are open stock. So if you're like, oh, I got this brand and it didn't have the best reds, or I got the polychromos, but I wish that I had better purples, then you can get a handful of purples from, Lum from Dermot Lightfast. Like you can mix and match, but I can't say for you which one is better for the smooth blending, that out of focus blending. If you like that look a lot, if you like portraits a lot, I like the higher wax based content. So that's going to be your Derwent Lightfast or the Caran d'Ache Luminance for that super sharp, crisp detail. I love my polychromos but they all like I can use just one pencil and finish a beautiful piece and get the same pretty much the same results so it you just alter your technique a little bit so there you go I don't know how helpful that is I can't make you the decision because I use all three over like they're all my favorites um let's see our house finch wouldn't be happy with us attempting to mess with her feathers yeah yeah she the the yes no they would not um let's see Right, Raven D said, I haven't had a pit bull since I was 16. I uh, was a hyperactive mutt who devoured our garage. Oh my gosh. My in-laws had a pit. We, when we lived with them for a while, the pit was there. It was the sweetest dog in the world. But you're not guaranteed to get the sweetest dog in the world. And with that much power and with how much crappy breeders, like these backyard breeders who are just, what? I got two puppies, a, a brother and a sister. Let's have them, let them have babies. And it's like, Ooh, it is just so common with that breed, these horrible, horrible practices, and they all end up in rescue. Like you look at what's available in the Humane Society and almost all of them are pits, and it's just the saddest thing ever. So I'm not saying that you don't have the most amazing dogs that happen to be pit bulls. Like I'm not, but good luck finding that. Like that is just, yeah, no, it's not. There's many, they're just not the breed for me. Um... Rob said, I had a Bernese Mountain dog. He was 165 pounds. They're not supposed to be that big. Of will of Twisted Steel and Sex Appeal. I loved him. We'll never have another like him. Oh, they're amazing dogs. Um, let's see. DJ said, I have a budgie, fits my lifestyle. That's me and my canary. Like I love Matt has well, chicken thinks he's mine, but um, we have the cockatiel, the, the Indian ringneck, and the parrotlet. He says he probably should have just gone all parrotlets. They're, they're so much, the, the parrotlets are hilarious. But um, I think he should get a second parrotlet, but whatever. Um, yeah, that little, these little guys, the canary is like the perfect bird for me. He hangs out. He is like, it is the most, like, he just gives you endorphins. He's like, here, I am around you, therefore you must be happy. Because he's so cute. This little bird flying around the office, so freaking cute. He fits my lifestyle. Um, oh, that was the video. Art of Raven Diaz said, said the most vicious dog we had was my Chihuahua, but he was tiny. Exactly, and that's this video went this reel that went up on YouTube. Um, and luckily, the, everyone ripped him apart. He was showing a video holding a Chihuahua and like antagonizing the dog. So every time he'd go like near him or to touch him, the dog would try to attack him, and he's snarling and you know being a Chihuahua. But the thing that was annoying is it's like that dog is showing you through his body language what you're doing to him right now. He does not appreciate. And so the fact that you are making a video antagonizing this poor Chihuahua, like yeah, Chihuahuas they can be nuts. That is not uncommon. But also the dog is giving you all the warnings in the world, and you keep doing it. You deserve that. But let's not pretend that Chihuahua is crazy. But also, let's not pretend the Chihuahua can do the same damage as the pit bull. And then he shows him with his pit bull and how, you know, the dog just being relaxed and chill and whatever. And it's like, uh-huh, your point? Like, the, the Chihuahua, how many, how many um, news stories do you hear about damage done from a Chihuahua? They can be insane and they're really not going to do a whole lot of damage. I mean, I can have a really mean canary and he's not going to hurt anybody. So that's... Um, yeah, that reel. It didn't get him the response he he was hoping for. I was really glad that everyone pretty much ripped him apart. They're like, um, you're not comparing. Like, that's a really stupid argument. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, I have an American Staffshire Terrier. Frequently messed up. Well, okay. So it is pit, the term to hit pit bull. There's no breed pit bull. Pit is just American Staffshire Terrier is considered it's under the umbrella of, I mean, kind of like someone saying dog and they all fit under that. So yeah, like when you're at a show, you say American Pitbull Terrier when you're calling them to the ring. You don't say Pitbull or Pit because it's it's just kind of an umbrella term for any of the breeds within that, any of the bully breeds. So um, it's not that they're being misidentified. It's that it's like pointing at Gibson and going, look, it's a dog. No, he's a greyhound. I mean, it's both. Um, Pitbull isn't a breed at all. Like 
So that's why that happens. Uh, the staffie was the old RCA uh, gam gramophone, 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 gramophone. Uh, Artie Raven D, our pit liked small dogs, but big dogs he wanted to kill. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see, let's scroll. DJ is still in it. I don't, I still don't have yours, DJ. I don't know where it's coming or where it is. Um, we'll, we'll get you taken care of though, for sure. The new Discord UI is awful in the app. Yeah, I am having issues with, I don't like the, the yes, I'm, no. Um, let's see. Ashley, and now Ashley runs a pit bull uh, rescue. So she's the one who's in there rescuing all these dogs that are these breeders, these irresponsible breeders, irresponsible owners. She has to deal with all of this. So yeah, so thank you for understanding canine genetics. Yeah, and that's the problem. When people don't understand the genetics, they're just like, oh, look, cute puppy. It's just how you raise them. I can't make my dog, like we have to be so careful with sight hounds. That is, it doesn't matter how good their recall is. They see a rabbit or they see something to chase. They, their instinct says, I don't hear you anymore. I'm doing my job. And all breeds have different things they were bred for, and you can't undo that. Now, some people, some of some people, some you can call them people. Some of these dogs are bad at their jobs, but it's just their nature. And, to, and when you don't understand that, you end up with a breed that just doesn't fit your lifestyle. Like for me, I can't undo the fact that a mastiff is going any one of the mastiffs when they shake their head, drool goes goes all over. It would be dumb for me to get that dog and then be unhappy because I had drool on my couch. Like, that's on me, not the dog. You need to understand certain things about the characteristics of that breed. And that, that's why I don't, I don't want to say I don't like mutts because some of my favorite dogs have been mutts or mixed breeds, but I would probably take just about any mixed sighthound breed that you get some neat looking dogs. But anyway, um, so, but I like to know, like have a better idea of what fits in my lifestyle. And again, part of that is because I am that neurotic. So I really want to know what to expect. Um, let's see. Nick said, my Boston wouldn't be a good guard dog. He's too happy meeting people and he gets scared of the wet stove. <laughs> oh my gosh. DJ said, I love birds. Me too. Um, let's see. He's flying around in his cage trying to get my attention at the moment. Aw. Nicole said, I'm on my third Australian Shepherd. Smart and goofy too. I love Australian Shepherds. That's that's definitely a breed. Like if I didn't want the sight hounds, that's and like, yes, I love those guys. What about a Husky? Yeah, I live in Texas. <laughs> that's not the right. Not that people don't have Huskies in Texas, but I, I don't feel like our weather and me going on long walks when it's 100 degrees out, even at night. Or no, at night it'd be like 90. That's not a dog that can go with me. Um, that's also a lot of fur. So there's my next thing. Remember the whole I'm neurotic? Yeah, <laughs> that fur is a thing for me. I don't, yes, no. Um, let's see. Yes, Nick said so much hair. <laughs> like if I lived up north, I might actually consider it, even with the hair. But you consider, I live in Texas, so are he, and not that the dog wouldn't be in the house all the time. I mean, they, well, Gibson likes to hang out outside more. But yeah, no, they can't go on walks in the, that coat and that heat. I just don't, for how much I walk, no. Um, let's see, uh, Mona Lisa said, I have a staffy and French bulldog mix. She's super sweet. I like French bulldogs. I mean, it's not a fit for my lifestyle, but dear God, I think they're the cutest thing ever. Um, let's see. Are Raven D said Chihuahua could still hurt kids. Yeah, that is true. Haven't had a uh, death, but could, mo but mostly terrible dog bite appoint. Oh God, I read that wrong. Mostly terrible dog bite appointments we got in my last couple of jobs were Chihuahuas. Those Chihuahuas were uh, really angry. We, the worst I saw were always Cocker Spaniels when I worked at the animal hospital. Oh my God, those dogs, and they're big enough that they can do, I mean, not as much as, they don't have as much power as a pit, but they're just kind of, they, they have a tendency to be pretty nasty to strangers. That's um, beautiful dogs, but my gosh. Um, Brittany said, I like cats because I grew up with a wide variety of female and male cats. I had one cat that I loved, and then I, my other cats were not that cat, and I realized I'm not a cat person, I was a that one cat person. I'm definitely a dog person. 
Although I did, oh my gosh, we went to the pet store to get bird seed and bird toys and because sushi goes through them like crazy. So we're getting more toys and stuff and they had the cats for adoption. Oh, it was, I don't know why. I was like, this doesn't fit my life. I, with my plants, my fish, my birds, like this does not fit my life. But oh, it was a little, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little tempted. I talked myself out of it because no, that is not my, that is not, there's so many reasons for no on that one for me. Um, let's see. Python said, I'm obsessed with, with those German shepherds with the giant ears. And the German shepherds I love, but we, because of our breeding practices, we have trashed their hips. And when I worked at the animal hospital, and this was back in two, the early 2000s, late 90s, so I doubt that it's gotten any better. Every single one of them, two years old, they're all coming in for surgery for hip dysplasia. And I'm like, nope, that is not. Melanois have the protectiveness of German Shepherds and they're very intelligent, but they're like on crack, so there's that. Um, they're not as chill as a German Shepherd. That's the downside. Um, but yeah, no, the, the hips on those, we have bred those into the, literally into the ground. So that's a really sad thing because we have ruined that breed, um, which sucks. Let's see, Joseph said, is there a lot of small animals in Texas? I couldn't imagine having a sight hound with all the squirrels around here. So we have to be very, very careful about opening doors. We have to be very, very careful. Like the fences all have locks on them because someone accidentally opens a fence. Now I feel like everyone should do that anyway. It is extremely irresponsible to not take all precautions to make sure your dog doesn't get out of the yard. It's not cute. Oh, look, they got out again. That's how dogs get hit by cars. Um, if they're not out attacking somebody, like at the very least protect your animals, but anyway. Um, because if somebody accidentally, like, let's say somebody's doing yard work and they open the wrong fence and my dogs go bolting out, like we have to take precautions there. And then when we walk them while they are trained, they wear, um, Martingale collars, which is kind of like a really thick choke. Like it works like a choke chain in that when they pull it tightens so they can't, it can't slip over their head because their heads are smaller than their necks. That is a concern. But the way that their collars are, they can't get away. So it's one of those, I mean, that those leashes, they walk right next to me at my side and those leashes are wrapped so far around my hand. Not that they couldn't drag me along with them, but they're not getting away. So yeah, you have to take a lot of precautions um, with sight hounds to make sure when they see small animals, because when they see bunnies and oh, do they get excited. So yeah, you, you just have to be aware of that, aware of your surroundings and that leash is wrapped so far around my, like all the way up my legs, uh, or not my legs, not my legs, my arm. I walk them with my arms, not my legs. Um, I hold the leash with my, whatever, moving on. Our Raven D said our household preferred dogs, but over time we ended up with more cats. A wild mother dumped three kittens in our garage and we're, not, uh, and we're stuck with six cats. Oh my gosh, you sound like Joseph now. Uh, let's see. You know, Carol, uh, Carolyn said, even up here in central Ontario, summers here are just too hot for Huskies to be out for very long on many days. Um, let's see. Linda said, our, our latest cat has so many dog behaviors. She lays like a dog and begs for attention like a dog. It's so funny. See, now that's my kind of cat. But in which case, I could just get a dog. I have a dog. But that's the, those are the cat personalities I love. I always wanted an orange tabby. Like if I ever got a cat, I think I want an orange tab, a male orange tabby. But I'm not getting a cat, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, Python said house cats are hilarious. The only reason they don't kill you is because they aren't big enough. Right there. See, exactly. Watching videos of other people's cats doing rotten things, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Joseph said, picturing Lisa getting dragged around by the legs down the road, <laughs> Indiana Jones style. Moody Roan said, Wade likes going for walks. Now, yeah, Wade, Wade doesn't like walks. Wade would, would rather the walks not happen. But if I'm taking Gibson, he has a meltdown if he doesn't get to come. Like he has to be with his family. It's major separation anxiety in that bad cow. So yeah, he goes on walks now and he's much better. He still spooks occasionally because he'll walk by and be like, oh my God, that's a street light and it scared the crap out of me. That, it, I'm not walking past the street light, it's terrifying. Like random, but only that street light. That street light's fine. That street light is a murder lamp apparently. So yeah, random. He's not all there in the head, but he insists on coming. I mean, he is like, I pick up a leash and he's just right there on my face. You're not leaving without me. You can't leave me behind. Even though he's being left behind with Matt. Not good enough. He has to come with the family. He wants to be with us. So yeah, he, he wants to go. Does he like them? No, but he also insists on coming with us. Um, let's see. Joseph said, I have an orange tab tabby. They're genetically silly. 
Hitomi said, my orange tabby was very much like a dog, loved people and would talk to everyone, how cute. Um, let's see. Yeah, everyone's saying their orange tabby is hilarious. Linda says, we have a baby orange tabby outside. He's adorable with his little white paws. Aw. Um, yeah, Clark right now, poor bad cow. Yeah, he's, hmm, he's a mess. DJ said, I had my skinny pigs, hamsters, dragons, cockatiels, budgies, and a frog. Uh, let's see. Um, Joseph said, maybe the street light as a human, uh, has a human inaudible hum or something. Hmm. Yeah, it, that, that, I did wonder if there was like a weird sound. I don't know. He's just, Gibson didn't care. Gibson's like, whatever. Um, oh, we need two more winners. Oh, you probably sent them already, Nick. Okay, our last two winners for the mini prints are... We've got Thomas Bear of Connecticut, and then one more. We'll wait on that. Why me to move so that streetlight has an, ear, has an ear, <laughs> evil spirit attached and Wade sees it. You know, I always think that when you see an animal randomly stare at the wall or something, you're like, what do you see? Don't, like, don't make me paranoid. Art of Raven D said I would be in trouble if my cat was as big as a lion. He plays rough. I'd be, uh, I'd be missing limbs and occasionally wake up to something that he does that I can't say in the chat, he's something. Um, and the last winner for the, the uh, print, oh, another non-US resident, so that's kind of nice, because you know, usually these stu this stuff is just the US. Annette Hagen from Norway, yay! So that is it, um, we are all done. Keep leaving comments, like in this video after it's over, if you wanna leave comments for what you wanna see for next week's live stream, maybe one of them will strike a, an idea of something that would work out well. Um, but thank you guys so much. And I think I get to keep Glitch. I don't think that's sold, let's see. Do I get to keep this for myself? I do. I'm not mad about it, not gonna lie. You are now a part of my Christmas decor Glitch. My Glitch that stole Christmas. Um, so thank you so much. Make sure to check out our moderators channels. They are all linked in the video description. Clark Fine Art and Joseph, uh, The Art of Joseph Fincham. His name changed at some point years ago, and apparently my brain just tried to revert back to the old way. They are, both have live streams regularly. Definitely check them out. Nick has a cool uh, digital painting from following my lesson. I didn't even make my video yet. But yes, those are available. Uh, definitely check them out. Thank you. Oh, can we see the, the painting, please? This, the painting from the giveaway, which one? So here was the giveaway painting. So we've got a nice Christmassy one. I need to varnish that. I need to varnish the chickadee from last week, too get that sent out and then here was the finished one from tonight glitch in on the christmas ornament santa glitch that is not i can't i need to post a good photo that's too out of focus when i get that close for that camera but there we go it's more red it is way more red than it looks there so thank you guys so much i will see you guys next week um yeah i think that's all i don't think i have anything else to ramble about i'll see you guys next week Oh, and then randomly, why did you just do that? There we go.